Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Who Cares podcast. Today, Zoe and I are so excited. We have John Dolan on here with us. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, you've probably already heard who he is, but we're so happy to have him on here. He's been a huge inspiration in Zoe and I's own work, and we just love his work. We love everything, and we're just so excited to talk with him a little bit today. So, John, kind of where we wanted to start is me and Zoe, we, we spent some time kind of looking through some of your work, looking through some of the stuff that you've that you've posted and wrote recently, and we were talking a little bit about it, and you you talk a lot about these photos being like in the moment and creating these these photos that feel how the wedding day felt so we were just curious like when you're doing that when you're after the wedding you're going back through these pictures what what stands out to you like what is a picture you look out and you're like that's a picture i'm proud of taking it's got to be something that surprises me a little bit it's got to be something that uh hits me in the heart or, or it triggers something that I didn't expect. Uh, it's really easy to take pictures all day at a wedding and just shoot exactly what is there. And I'm trying to photograph what's a little bit invisible or the pixie dust that's in the air or um, something that is not so controllable and not so... Uh, predictable and it's a it's the funny nature of weddings that they always follow the same script so we kind of know what's about to happen but how do you reinvent it every wedding you go to that's the that's been the challenge for me for all these years how do you manage to stay in that headspace where you're you're looking to create something new out of something that is so similar and so repetitive yeah, I just don't want to be bored. I, and I don't want to bore people who look at the pictures. Um, certainly when I first started shooting weddings, uh, it was about the same time I was getting married and I'd go to friends' houses and they'd say, do you want to see my wedding pictures? And I would just be terrified to, or I just dread the the predictability of everyone's albums in the 90s. So uh, it was always my goal to make pictures that uh, somebody was showing them to their friends, their friends were going to be, um, they'd want to see more as opposed to sort of dreading that moment of uh, opening the album and just being bored. I don't, you know, I don't know what year your parents were married, but um, are, have you looked at your parents' wedding albums and were they cliches? So I only have one picture of my parents' wedding. Um, and it's this tiny photograph and my dad always, um, make fun of him because I tell him he looked like Bruno Mars. Um, but it's, it is what I would say is a very like basic picture other than you can tell if you look at their faces that they're just a little bit horrified. <laughs> and I think like that is really the reality of a lot of wedding days because there's so much happening and and you get to be you get to experience all these emotions but a lot of times when we capture them or as we're capturing them a lot of times we're guiding people into these poses and we in doing so we lose that emotion and we kind of have this you know fake pose smile um so i think that's neat for my parents picture is that you can see like oh we're doing this like this is happening right i mean this is my big question for photographers is why do they feel the need to direct and control the people and uh, what's the fear of letting it all happen letting the uh, the people in the pictures experience whatever they're experiencing in, in my experience the less hard I work, the better the pictures are because the emotions coming from the subject rather than me telling them what to feel. Do you think people are afraid to do that? I think, I think a lot of photographers are. And I think even at times like we are afraid to do that because I think the fear would be that you would take bad photographs that the client didn't like. And so 
as you're doing that, is, is there like a balance to that? Like, how do you begin to just let them be themselves, but also know that you're going to create great photographs? Uh, you know, I think if, if, if we go back to the beginning for a second, I was a photographer before I was a wedding photographer. So I was doing picture stories for magazines. I was doing uh, nonprofit work. I was doing ad work. I was always doing a bunch of different storytelling things. And in most of those jobs, I didn't have a lot of control over the situation. I was just um, not reporting, but just kind of covering the situation or having little moments of, of making people feel comfortable. But I never set things up. So that was my training ground. And I think that gives me, that gave me a big advantage when I came to weddings. I was already really fast and really fluid in being in the moment. And I really think that I'm realizing when I talk to more photographers that people just never had that experience to shoot jobs where you didn't, you weren't allowed to say a word or you weren't really, it wasn't part of your brief to control things. Um, so I, I understand it, but I also think that uh, the real moments are so much richer and the beautiful pictures will come if you're quick and uh, if you know light and if you know how people look good. And, and also, uh, you're also going to find all these more complex pictures that are not about showing the people at their best, but showing their people... Uh, at their most authentic and what they're really going through. So uh, it's being open to the complexity is really a crucial thing. I think that fear that you mentioned is something I definitely experience. And like, when I look at our completed galleries, my favorite are the ones that have those imperfections, the ones where I can see the raw emotion. Um, but I still, when I go to share images, uh, when I go to share images with clients and stuff, I'm still too afraid to put those out there. They're not the first things I'm showing. Um, and I don't know, like, I don't know personally how to get past that fear. Have you, have you had clients say to you, uh, you blew it or I didn't, you didn't get this picture. You didn't get that, or I don't look good in this. And, or is, yeah. Cause I think a lot of that is kind of a, a mythological fear people have of getting an email from somebody, somebody saying, I'm really upset. I'm going to sue you. You didn't get a picture of uncle Bill. And um, so photographers are so anxious about that, but I've been doing it 30 years. Maybe I blew it once when I was first starting out. But if you make 10 great pictures, people are going to see those 10 great pictures and feel so filled up by that. If you take a thousand mediocre pictures, people are going to be, you know, just kind of say, oh, my wedding pictures were okay. But uh, so it's a, it's a different approach, which is a higher risk, but higher reward kind of way of working. And I just think that people are, you know, people are in general, people are anxious about a lot of things in life. Um, but if you, if you, uh, if you get so good at your work and you're able to make pictures that really please yourselves or please each other, um, you're going to be shocked how your clients will be happy instead of chasing your clients, trying to make them happy, make yourself happy. That's my theory. I am. I'm curious though, with that, when you're working on a wedding day, is there a balance between kind of chasing these moments and then, you know, what I guess would be the typical pictures on a wedding day, you know, your formals, your portraits, like, is, is that something you're like avoiding altogether and, and like talking to your clients about, or is, is there a balance between those? You know, um, all along I've tried to reinvent each part of the wedding day. So, um, just to keep myself fascinated and not get stuck in the mud. So, um, I try to mix things up at each point, but especially with group pictures, I've always wanted them to be fast and fun. And, and I tell people, tell your wedding party, 
this guy's different. He's not going to make you stand all in, lo- in a line and not going to make it go for two hours. And, uh, and once you get people on your side, I kind of lean into whatever the spirit of that wedding party is. And if they're, you know, if they're cra- wild and crazy, I go with that. If they're more stiff, I'll, I'll let them be themselves. But, um, it's not, it's, it's, it's really about how, if you were getting married, how would you want your friend group to be remembered? What's the DNA of that friend group? And that's the picture. It's one picture, or maybe it's, you know, a few different frames. But I think the idea of people going so crazy about getting every single picture on the shot list of uh, every combination, kind of a waste of a lot of energy. And uh, my clients generally are drawn to me because they don't want uh, you know, they, they they get it right from the start that I'm not that guy who gets the exact picture of every every person and uh, every detail. Like processing, because I feel like it's like it's hard to get past like what you think is expected and like truly it's brave and I think when I look at your pictures um you said like you want the emotion you want them to be who they are in those pictures and I think you see that and I think you can see the stiffness in some of them but it is who who those people are like I don't know I don't know um how to ex- I don't know how to explain where I'm going with this, but well, I think what happens is if you're tight as a photographer, your pictures are going to be tight. Uh, you know, every picture is kind of a self-portrait; it's a reflection of you. And if you go into a wedding nervous and worried that you're going to disappoint, and uh, it's the same as skiing too tight or golfing too tight or any sport you you're into uh if you go in like this you're just gonna snap and i think that um, i see a lot of photographers who work too hard and push too hard and uh, drag people around and because they're insecure they don't want to disappoint they're afraid they're anxious Um, the flip side of that is where you have clients who trust you and they love your work, they love your personal work, they love your pictures of your kids or your dog or whatever, and they say, you're a photographer, come photograph my wedding, and then they trust you to do your thing. I mean, that's that's really the ideal, but I you think, can't, you, go ahead. I think what I, what I um, meant was, even in those pictures where the people are stiff, your images give to me um, this like sense of freedom regardless of the image. And so I think that's what's so captivating is that like you sense freedom in all of your images. And I think that's what's like made me fall in love with your pictures and made me want to be more creative and really look for those moments and be able to share that with our own clients. Yeah, it's. I think it's. I think it's more than just taking candids. Um, I think that it requires. <laughs> I think it requires. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I think it really requires a whole mindset shift, and that's what I'm suggesting to people: is, uh, you know, allow yourself to be uh, a guest at the wedding and not push so hard and to flow with the, the wedding and, you know, all this, this, this general mindset of, of, uh, you're recording, you're trying to find what people are feeling and then photograph it. So it actually takes a lot of looking and waiting and, um, sensing how people are feeling before you work it. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's my mindset. I think, Like that was something like that's shifted in our own work over time because when you're, when you're first starting and I'm sure it's like this for a lot of photographers and it was like this for us, like you said, you feel the need not only 
to force some moments like to take control, but also you feel the need to be shooting at every single moment of the day. Like if you're there for eight hours, you feel like you have to photograph for eight hours. And what you begin to realize is, is that if you shoot for eight hours straight, you're exhausted and you just, you didn't really pay attention. You just put your camera up and took pictures for the sake of taking pictures. Yeah, I think uh, it's not like a normal job. It's not like a, you know, eight hour shift at Chipotle or at the office or on a construction site. It's, it's, uh, you're a live performer and you have to stay in the zone and you have to, I mean, I often walk out, walk away, walk outside the tent, come back in fresh, take a break. Um, I, I, I definitely want to experience it with all my senses really heightened and really aware. And uh, it's, I, I think a lot of the talk around wedding photography and the workshops and all is treating it as if it's a normal business and you have to increase your profits and increase your SEO and increase all these things. And it's, I think of it in a whole different way where it's a uh, precious commodity that you have to reserve for really special moments and your creative energy has to be uh, at maximum. You just have to care for it. So if you're, if you're shooting 40 weddings a year, you're going to burn out in three years uh, and you're not going to make pictures that are surprising to you. So another thing that I noticed looking at your pictures um, was with your editorial work, at least the most like recent stuff I saw, um, I still got that feeling of freedom, which to me is even, you know, is mind blowing because getting real people or getting people to be themselves or just allowing them to be themselves on wedding day, I guess, when they're around a bunch of people that they know, they are already kind of in this casual setting for them. So they can do that. But how do you get, when you're working on your editorial work, how do you get these models to just show that kind of freedom? It's it's a good question because it's... Um it's it's all part of the same mindset and even the words you're using of of getting people to do this or allowing them to do it i think a lot of it is that we just have to allow things to happen and have faith in yourself that it will happen and there's a you know there's a huge amount of doubt at certain points in the shoot like this is not going to work but then somehow it works out somehow by not pushing it and not trying to control it uh, and creating this environment that's really welcoming and uh, you actually treat the models like human beings and you don't, uh, you know, it creates a whole vibe. So it's, it's uh, we always kind of had a mentality on my shoots of that we're working really hard, but nobody knows it. So, you know, you create that kind of understated vibe and, uh and also, I mean, if you really think about it, it's such a, a joy and a privilege to do this job and to treat it like a, you know, this really hard thing you got to do is kind of a joke. Oh my God, I had to work 18 hours on this photo shoot. Well, you got to work 18 hours on a photo shoot and you got to make beautiful pictures is kind of the way I saw it. With that, when you're on those shoots and you're working, in that kind of situation, like you said, you have these moments where it's not going well. Is Does that ever, in in your case, does that ever like carry throughout the shoot? Like, do you ever leave the shoot and be like, I don't know if we got it. Like, I'm not, does that make sense? Like, I'm not completely confident yeah. because I just kind of let it like freely flow. I've, I've certainly had some, <laughs> some high risk moments, but, um, you know, I've learned to kind of control my risks or minimize my risks, but uh, you know, certainly I've lit a candle for while the film's developing to, you know, <laughs> please photo universe, allow this, uh, give me one shot there. And, um, but I think that, I think it's also part of the, 
thrill of it is taking risks and uh, not playing it safe. For me, playing it safe is really failure. Uh, and that's what I'm always pushing against, even though, you know, I may be painting this picture that it's all loose and all free and all, but um, I definitely have learned to cover myself, but I have to have that mentality that I'm taking risks so that I actually uh, get those pictures that thrill me. Um, the, and, you know, I, I was, I never really understood what the word basic was until somebody showed me a set of photographs that were just so ordinary and so plain and so expected and so safe. And I just, uh, I really think that if you get your film back from the lab and it's just so blah, then it's just, you've wasted the film, the processing, the creative energy, the, you know, you haven't put yourself out there and, you know, the artists that I admire take risks and, push themselves hard and um, are always reinventing. What do you, what do you think that looks like as a wedding photographer? Like how do you begin to like reinvent and what does that process look like as you're like working through that? I, you know, I think it's, I, uh, my, my whole mentality is that each wedding is its own trip and I try not to compare myself or com compare clients and um, I try to walk into that house on that Saturday and say, what's this family like? And what's the other family like? What's the merger of these two strange families who don't know each other? Um, so it's almost like I'm a short story writer trying to figure out or detective trying to figure out who these people are. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, Everything I'm describing is taking this as not as a professional photographer who comes in with a prep list and a uh, action plan and three assistants. It's more, I wake up that day, I put on my suit, I grab my cameras and I go into the unknown trying to uh, discover something about these human beings because it's, it's a strange thing um, to get married and so the picture should echo that kind of the ride people are on. When you said you, you go into the, the unknown, like on a Saturday when you're going to a wedding, do you do any sort of like, like what is your like prep up to a wedding goes? Uh, like, do you work with the couples? Do you try to understand that story a little bit before you go in? Or is it just showing up on that Saturday and just, uh, no, I, a few years back, I started doing, uh, trying to reinvent the engagement portrait. So six months beforehand or something like that, I'll meet people if they're in New York, especially we'll meet for a glass of wine and walk around a little bit and just, I'll shoot one or two rolls of film, uh, a little bit of digital just to get to sense of how they are together and for them to get used to how I shoot and, um, and just to, to get to know them so that when I see them at the wedding, it's like we're old friends or they're, we know each other in a certain way. Um, I also love shooting Friday nights. I think the rehearsal's really an amazing time to get to know who the key players are and, and for people to get to see who I am. Um, and so that on Saturday, I'm already a little bit inside and I have some allies and I have you know, it's like, oh, John's here. Things are starting. Um, I also don't start too early. I think that's an important part of what I do. Um, I kind of say, what time are you putting on the dress? And then I come an hour and a half beforehand, but uh, not more than that. I want to want to keep it. I don't want to be there before things are really happening. Um, but it, it creates this thing where I'm a welcome guest rather than a vendor coming and going to work. It's like, oh, John's here. Cool. That's awesome. I think like um, people outside of the wedding industry may not necessarily understand, but you really do form a bond with your couples and even with their families that is 
so different from any other relationships you have because you're kind of thrown into the most important moments. And being surrounded by their closest friends and family, it's really hard not to just be yourself whatever that looks like and so I know like anytime we leave a wedding I feel this very strong connection with our clients and I always wonder do they feel the same way back and I don't think so because you know we're working we're watching them our job is really to to keep an eye on them and look for those moments like you talked about and so it's like this weird relationship where I'm like in love with these people now and I have to let them go. And that's right. Do you ever see them after? Do you deliver your pictures in person? And we, um, we love staying in touch. So we talk to our clients regularly. Um, a lot of them are pretty close to us. So we'll still do dinner and, you know, hang out past that. But I, I never I never know how much I can connect with them after without being like intrusive. (laughs) Well, I, it's interesting because I've made a lot of great friends from weddings, uh, especially in the early years, because most of the people I was working for uh, worked in the magazine world or in the ad world. So um, I'd say in my first 50 weddings, 30 of them were people I ended up working for working with and then it was like uh you knew them in a different way it's like i knew i saw your crazy uncle on the dance floor and uh or i knew your brother and you know, you're inside the family at that point so it became a great basis for working relationships and um i think there's a shared trust there that especially when you deliver these really powerful pictures, uh, I mean, I could think back to the number of times people have called me and said, oh, that, you had that picture of my aunt and she just passed away. Can we use it in the funeral uh, booklet? And uh, she was so happy on that night. And so, you know, there's a potential for taking really valuable historical pictures. Um, That's why it's always a disappointment to me when people just sort of just uh, shoot it uh, you know they don't go they don't really go for it it's a missed opportunity because these are moments that will never happen again where you get all the family members together and you know everyone's feeling good and looking good it's really a unique opportunity because for most people they don't have their lives documented regularly for most regular people there's not people constantly you know, documenting, taking pictures of everything that's happening with all of their family around at all these family events. So weddings are this really unique opportunity to provide these people with like this documentation of their family as a whole that they really don't have an opportunity to have elsewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a waste when, when people treat it as a kind of ordinary thing because it's, you know, you see the looks on people's faces, uh, especially over the last couple of years. People were so grateful to gather and, uh, you know, people travel from all over the world to come to this event and then to deliver just kind of banal, basic pictures is a, is a missed opportunity. It's funny. I feel like Um, The next wedding that we have coming up is actually, um, I'm shooting it, it's Nathan's brother's wedding. And early on in, um, you know, when we started doing photography, I was like, I don't think that I want to photograph family weddings. I don't think that I want to do that. Um, I guess I I was worried it would be too much, but being comfortable and where we are now, I'm like so excited to be able to see the situation through that photography like perspective and be able to see our families and and um kind of I I always feel like brides and and their families have like wedding day attitudes and even like the grooms like because you're so excited you can't hide how excited you are and so I'm really looking forward to seeing that in our own families and being able to document that 
Oh, it'll be amazing. I think shooting family weddings or friends' weddings is a super opportunity to take risks and try something new and um, shoot it from the inside. It just It's a really good reset for people. Um, I, I always do one or two a year, and it's just there's no pressure. There's no, uh, you know, you're seated at a table, you're having a drink, you're dancing, and you're shooting all at the same time. So would you say that's kind of the goal for every wedding? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, you can use, if thing if you make pictures at your brother-in-law's wedding that uh, surprise you, then those should be the top of your list on your website, or those should be at least your inspiration for your next wedding after that. It's, it's, that's the thing. You got to shoot free and then have the positive reinforcement of coming back with these pictures that are, you know, something you wouldn't have done at a paid job. Um, but you, you were free to experiment. You were free to, uh, shoot a weird angle cause you're that close to the groom or the groomsman. You know, I think it's, it's a, it's a super good reset. I think, I think for sure, like that is the goal is to be able to just have those moments and be able to just feel through them because it's going to be so different. Like it's my brother. It's not someone that I, you know, didn't know before this moment, all of that, that feeling of trying to figure out who they are. It's like, you know, who they are. You've known this person for a really, really long time. And so all of that effort that you normally have to put into doing that, you can now use that to just that energy to just create images. But again, I think that should be the goal all the time, right? Because you kind of, you, you get to, so it's really neat to look at it this way because when I think of it from the perspective of your brother's wedding, I'm like, okay, I can, I can do this. I can relax. I can, be here, be in the moment and just document it because I know that they will appreciate this. And so it's this, it should be the same for every client because we want the best for them. Like, you know, the whole, the whole point of even, you know, this podcast for us is that we care so deeply about our, our couples. And we know there are so many people in this, in the industry who also care so much about their couples. So it's, it's like, I want to be able to give the absolute best to them. Well, I think I, I think you're on to something, Zoe. I think the game is to go into a wedding that's not your family members as if it is. And it's a delicate balance. I'm not sort of saying like walk into the kitchen and open the fridge and chug some milk, but it's not feeling like an outsider. If If the family lets you in, if they trust you, if they think you're cool, if they think you're a kind person, then don't stay back. Don't don't hold back. Don't be uh, worried about pleasing them. Just be worried about um, making boring pictures. Um, I, I I think it's also just talking about the name of your podcast. I was thinking about what directions I give when I give directions to couples. And the main direction I give is don't care. Like don't, don't think about, don't try to please, don't think you're going to be in Vogue magazine. Don't, don't worry about modeling. Don't worry about posing. Just don't care. And as soon as they get that mentality, we're like, oh, we're just, we're just here. We're just feeling what we're feeling. That's when I get the pictures. So it's when people are, uh, you know, sometimes you see a couple where one person is more comfortable in front of the camera and the other person's really disappointing the other person and you can see them kind of fighting about it that's when i'll say just don't care it doesn't matter just go for a walk and turn around and stop and go and kiss and whatever but um somehow i think everyone who's being photographed is worried about disappointing the photographer and about disappointing each other and that's kind of a waste of a lot of energy. That's a really interesting statement because I never 
hearing you say it, I do, I can, I can think back to our couples and it's like when they're uncomfortable, they're worried that they're disappointing us. They're worried that they're not doing everything right. So to be able to communicate that back with them and, and just like, be like, Hey, it's fine. You know, which we do, which we do, <laughs> but I don't know, for some reason, when you say it, it makes more sense. <laughs> I think, I think people, uh, because we're all watching everything everyone else is doing with Instagram that I think giving that permission to just say, you know, whatever, just don't care. Um, that as soon as you give people that permission slip, then they go, then they relax, their shoulders go down and they start improvising on their own the way they normally would, but you can't tell somebody to relax you can make them relax the same way you can't tell kids to smile. You can make them laugh. I want to get the parents of America to stop telling their kids to smile for the camera because it's just, that's not, that's, that's imposing a, an emotion on somebody as opposed to, uh, you know, letting the kids be and letting couples be and, uh, there's so much pressure and we have to diffuse the pressure. Because basically photographers are responsible for causing a lot of this. So I'm on a mission to depressurize people. We're reprogramming the entire world now, the photography world. He's like, it's and you're crucial. single-handedly yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really funny thing to watch the industry for all these years because I've watched it since it was a baby and now it's all grown up and it's kind of, or maybe it's like an angsty teenager, but it's, um, it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be this way. You can make great pictures and have fun and have the, it be a really incredibly enjoyable experience. That's kind of the main goal for me is that when I leave at midnight, that the people are just like, that was incredible. That was, we were so glad you were here and you're part of the family now and, you know, whole list of those things because I treated them kindly and didn't impose my will and didn't force emotions on them. Um, so that's how I know I've gonna, done a good job. And uh, so it's really, my behavior is a huge, uh, has a huge effect on the pictures. Yeah. And I guess too, like typically um, couples, you know, this is their first experience through it. So it makes sense that they would feed off of our, our attitudes, our behaviors, because they know this is an environment we're in constantly. So if we're uncomfortable, they're immediately uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. No, that's a crucial point that our experience, our, we can be this really positive force or we can kind of not ruin the day, but we can unsettle the day. Um, so I, you know, I kind of have my own rules, which is one of my rules is I never bring any negativity into the situation at all. I never say anything. I never say, oh, don't do that. Don't put your hand there. Or um, in even just a broader sense, if, if I see somebody coming towards the bride or groom with a problem, I kind of buffer it and say, don't mess with my brides. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that that's, that's really like a good point is, is being that, that person that, that brings that positive energy into it. Because even though these weddings, me and Zoe always laugh because like, you know, the, the saying is that it's the happiest day of someone's life and everything. And, and I think there's so many, great things and you are celebrating this like journey of of this like story that you have with this person but so many times it's also like so stressful for these people because i think so many people and and couples put their own pressure on what they expect from their wedding too and i think as as much sometimes as it is about like releasing expectations on your photographs and your couple so that you can just create how the day feels. It's also helping them release expectations from themselves for what their wedding should be. 
yeah, like that's such an unfair expectation that that day, you know, October 3rd is going to be the best day of your life and you're looking forward to it for nine months or a year and then it comes and what if it's not? Then, you know, then then you get the post-wedding depression and stuff. I, I really think that if you if you look at it carefully, uh, a wedding day is much more complicated than just one thing. So how can we say best day ever when it's going to have multiple parts to it? Some are going to be really complicated, really uh, messy, and then parts of it will be ecstatic and something will be in between and some of it will be disappointing and some of it will exceed your expectations like it should be it's so much broader than one thing uh that's why i've always fought against this narrow definition of wedding pictures of all all being bright and airy and sweet and sugar sweet and uh it's not a true representation and and weddings go kind of on an arc of tension beforehand when they're getting ready and then com complex ceremony and then uh hopefully they end with ecstasy on the dance floor but it's got to have all those things or else it's you know it's not real that's something that i've never thought about but it's so true like that beginning moment of the day that's where all of the tension in the day kind of lies it's in you know in that moment of the expectation of deciding like what this day is going to be and figuring out all the details leading up to the ceremony and and me and Zoe always laugh because it 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 really doesn't matter what the timeline ends up looking like when you get close to the ceremony it's going to get it's going to get like you said complex is a good word because something happened there's still only 5 minutes to the ceremony regard like regardless so that happens but i don't know like i've never thought of it as an arc like leading to the end of the day kind of where that tension finally just gets to dissipate and the reception is the part where everyone just truly gets to relax. And I think that's such a good point too, because like the reception is where people get to be the most themselves. But I think I've, I've seen this like trend in a lot of wedding photography here lately, where the reception is also kind of viewed as, is the least important part of the day. Although it is, the part where people are the most themselves and, and also honestly a majority of the day. Well, uh, it's, it's a, it's a crazy thing that that would become a trend that the, um, cause I think that the, a good reception is really the climax and it's, uh, I mean, when I was working on my book, we decided to make it into three chapters and almost like a play act one is the, both couples are separate and they're nervous. There's tension building act two as they come together. And then act three is, is the celebration. Um, and once I saw the wedding that way, when I was kind of laying out my book, I realized that people do go through this, uh, this range and this, uh, just a wild ride. Um, you know, somebody told me this, there's a new hashtag out there of, uh, of planned, have you seen this planned candids? No, good. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> checking if that's one of the trends you guys have recognized as well, because it's basically like taking the idea of candids and then, but forcing them, which to me is just the devil. It's just like, what are you? I do, I do think I've never heard of planned. It. I've never heard of the word, but I do think that's a trend, and so it's wrong. funny because I think like if you if you talk to a lot of these photographers and you looked at the, the pictures that were kind of their inspiration behind this is these photographers, you decide at some point that you like the emotion that these candid images have, but you don't feel like you have the control to actually be able to get them. And so you attempt to kind of plan it out, but it's it's funny because I, I would I would go on to say that for most wedding photographers, photographers like like you, like for me, like Daniel Kim comes to mind, like these photographers inspired these photographers to want those kind of images. And it, it actually kind of led led to. That's crazy. That's so crazy. I mean, it's 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 like. um 
suppose the equivalent would be like microwaving a really great meal and just like instant gratification and uh <laughs> it's it's cheating it's it, it's just you got to you got to do the real thing and work hard and just get fast and free i mean daniel was daniel's a great example of somebody uh, he, he took one of my retreats and then he did some weddings for free and then he just let go of so much stuff and um and he's having a ball now because it's he's not thinking he's not overworking it he's he knows what he wants to do and he's just ripping it um so i'd say if anybody's trying to do something that would be a better path to follow than to having a prompt of everybody laugh everybody laugh again <laughs> i didn't get it it. Is, it is funny because like you said like prompts are also like they became like a bigger and bigger thing in in photography and in the end it's like when you use these prompts or you you say something funny like I can say something funny at a shoot that's going to make the couple laugh and then I can take a picture of that but then the memory associated with that picture is me making them laugh not yeah. them laughing because of their relationship as a whole and it's like with these prompts and that you use or however you choose to direct the couple it's like you have to help them feel that connection between e each other, not a right. connection to you making them feel that emotion. Right. Right. I mean, there's different philosophies, but I wouldn't want my career based on cute things I said to people, you know, I, I want it to be a little bit deeper, but um, I've, I've also realized that some photographers like to direct and some photographers like to collect and I'm a collector. Um, so it's, you know, it's good to know what your strength is, but I'm basically promoting the fact that if you're a person who's interested in just being a guest at the wedding and collecting images, that's okay. And you don't have to buy a stack of cards that will tell you how to direct your couples. Um, there's, there's ways to work it out your own way or, or reinvent your own thing. And, uh, uh, don't follow the herd, like take some ownership and uh, experiment and, and find something new. I think that's perfect. And it, and it kind of leads me into one question that I wanted to, to ask you was, you know, I've seen you say that, you know, that you're not a director, that, that you're an indirector, that you just, that you know, light, that you guide your couples, your person to this light, and then you just kind of let them let them be and i'm i'm so curious as on a wedding day when you're doing portraits when you're doing whatever what is what does that begin to look like where you do that because in a way it it when you read it you're like i understand like let them be but but like if i just told someone to go stand over there they're just going to you know stand there what what do you do to allow them to be themselves I think it's uh, a lot of it is timing. So I'm, I'm asking people to go for a walk uh, later in the reception, or or maybe I'll do uh, two or three ten minute sessions as opposed to one hour long session. So I'll I'll shoot pictures right after the uh, or during the cocktail hour. I'll do them really fast when they're buzzing with the energy of of the reception uh just starting and then i'll say go back and you know go see your friends and then the sun's setting i'll sense that there's amazing light and i'll grab them and say five minutes let's go here so it's a lot of sort of spontaneity and uh i'm taking the energy that they'll feel because they'll <clears throat> they'll see how great the light is and they'll see how excited i am and we'll go out for two seconds and get something great and then I'll say great go back in and uh, so it's that kind of uh, reading the temperature reading the room reading their what they're feeling and and not uh, pushing it too hard because I think sometimes you can sense people are missing their wedding because they're doing dumb pictures and I don't want to be that guy yeah no one I don't I hope no one wants to be that guy <laughs> right. um but I definitely think that that's 
an interesting point there. I lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I was going to say. I sense that there's good light. Like, yes. your spidey senses are tingling. You know when the light is good. That's. I think that's the most crucial thing. Uh, and being aware... Um, that that of what people how light makes people feel is really crucial too you know people there's a kind of melancholy when the uh blue hour comes and there's uh, there's just different ways of interpreting it if you kind of step back and say what does this make me feel i think with everything you've said so far and all of these things like one of the key points in this too is going to be being confident in your skills as a wedding photographer right. because in order to be able to just release that I am going to get the photograph that I need to if I watch these people if I try to feel the moment with these people you then have to be so confident that when that moment comes I'm just going to be able to take that picture that it's just going to be like that that's the easy part that just yep. taking the picture is not the difficult part, but being there and feeling it and, and all of that is the part that, that's crucial that takes the most work and yeah. and never is not going to take that much work because it's like, once you have your technical details of your camera down, you know it, but it's like every moment is different and every couple is different and understanding them is going to be different. Yeah, that absolutely spot on that taking the picture is the least of it for me it's all these other things that lead up to it how they feel around me uh, do they feel like they can be themselves with each other are they awkward public displays of affection or do they feel like this is a time to go for it and be free and um, but i also i always encourage people to do other things besides weddings so that you get really used to photographing in multiple situations so um, my big thing now is to find a local foundation and offer your services for nonprofit stuff because uh, wedding photographers are great storytellers. They're great at shooting fast in places, and maybe there's a local place that could really use uh, your skill set. And I kind of have this dream of setting up this nationwide directory of linking up nonprofits with wedding photographers, but that's a bigger project. Well, I think you know, reach out to reach out to your local. Uh, most regions have a, a community foundation, and I think if you called them or emailed them and said, uh, you know, I want to give you a couple days a year. Or I do ten days a year at our local foundation. It's amazing, and one day we'll shoot, you know, six to eight organizations, and we'll hop into a food kitchen, and we'll hop into a early childhood thing, and then an old folks home, and and you know some of the pictures are not great, but if you make a great picture there, then that's good for fundraising and it's good for community building, and it you know keeps you keeps you uh, keeps your spidey senses on target. For sure, I think, like you said, shooting other stuff. I think that's an interesting point too, because I think so many people just because kind of like what you're taught at this point getting into the industry is like oh you need to niche down in order to like make this work you have to decide what kind of photographer you're going to be and like Zoe and I did that like when we first started we were told that that was necessary so that's what we did and it's like in the past six months a year whatever we've realized that that doesn't make us good well-rounded photographers it's funny because they said that the point in doing that was to become an expert at this one thing, but it's like, there's so much you can learn from all of these other things. Yep. Yeah, no, you really do learn uh, how to deal with a lot of complexity in non-wedding situations. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I walk into an organization and there's just nothing, there's no good light. There's nothing to shoot. There's nothing. So it, it wakes up that, wakes up the problem solving part of my brain and um, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it's, it's kind of stirred things up. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Well, John, 
this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with us, answer some questions that we had. Like Zoe and I said, like your work has been really inspirational to us in helping us look at our work differently as we as we go on about this this journey that is being wedding photographers. Yeah, grow. That's a good word. Well, I, I've really thought about it recently that it's a golden age for uh, photography because for wedding photography in particular, because people are, they value good photography and there's such an opportunity to, to break out from all the kind of the basic photography and make something distinct, but um, it takes guts and takes uh, energy and you got to study and work and, uh, and, push yourself and but the rewards are incredible so I'm, I'm glad you guys invited me it's been a fun chat and i wish you all the luck in the world awesome thank, thank, you. thank you so much so we'll stop the recording yeah um but thank you so